you, you taught that AQ course all summer long. No, I mean like a, a job where I got to actually go somewhere. I feel like I feel that you would be a you would be great at a at a hardware store. I think that a hardware. Yeah, I think that I, I think that'd be a, a good fit for you. There. Well, I you could spend a lot of time there. And then, and I think that you would like you. I think that you would be good at you know kind of talking people through their projects and. Uh, <laughs> My daughter and you, worked at one all through high school. Home hardware in Richtown. Yeah. And then you can get all, you know, you get all the bits and pieces that you need for your, for your projects at home too, at, at a, uh, at a good discount. Okay. How is it now? That sounds good. That's better. Yeah. Oh, I just, moved just to the headset. headset. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a lot better. Oh, I forgot about my headset. I dusted mine off the shelf. <laughs> what time is it? A couple minutes. So we'll wait yep. a couple minutes. Yep. So we're at 1058 right now. We see, uh, there's some people joining us. Welcome everybody. We're going to get started at uh, 11 o'clock promptly and make sure that we respect everybody's time. I like your glasses. I'm not sure if you are, oh, you're muted. There you go. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, you? I'm good, thanks. I am the VP of Sir John Moore with Carrie Lynn. Oh. Oh. Well, oh, I was trying to go by what your username says and it doesn't make any sense then. <laughs> It's my last name and the, it's my six and two. Oh. So Nicola. Hi, Nicola. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. You look well. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. The girls and I just box dyed my hair. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good from here. <laughs> Thanks. Looks like you guys did a good job. Is, is, that, is that a first? Um, well, uh, after I cut it all off, it was my natural color and the girls were not used to it. And they were like, mom, that's really dark. Mm -hmm. So let's do one of those <laughs> highlight kits. But I think we highlighted a bit much. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> COVID coloring. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, it is 11 o'clock. We are going to start our recording and we'll get started here promptly. So welcome everyone. We are going to run a quick little session on getting started with uh, Google Classroom. Here we go. Guys, is, is this Google Classroom or Google Meets? This is Google Classroom. Oops. <laughs> I, need to, I know Google Classroom. I need to know how to do Google Meet. Um, yeah, just head back to the uh, LK Elementary Pro Blogspot page and all the links will be there for you. Sorry, guys. No worries. We'll talk to all you right. later. Nice meeting Ciao. you. Hey, Marilyn. Hey, how are you? Great. Good morning. Good morning. We I'm are going to be Good. I, I'll be popping in and out just because we have several sessions going on. So just yeah. uh, because Rod can't be at all of them either. So just making sure. sure everything everything goes okay. If there's a problem and I'm not with you, like if we have a strange person show up or something, like uh, text me or Rod right away, okay? <laughs> I've got an eye on the participant list. We are I, I have no fear. I have no fear. <laughs> all right. All right. Have a good one, you guys. Thank you. Take care. Enjoy your day. Okay. All set, Kate? Uh, sorry, I was like lagging there. <laughs> so yeah, we're at my part. Okay, so I'm going to read the um, land acknowledgement. So we are joining you today from Lambton Kent District School Board, which is the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Potawatomi, Odawa, and Delaware Nations. If you're joining us from another location, you're encouraged to recognize the nations whom traditional territory you share today. These nations agreed through their ancestral languages to the mutual sharing of the land, 
with obligations and responsibilities to the environment. Today, these responsibilities and obligations extend to all peoples. Awesome. Okay. Uh, welcome to everybody that's joining us today. Uh, our session today is focused around getting started with Google Classroom. We appreciate the time that you're taking away from your summer break and from your families and from your other obligations to join us today uh, to learn a little bit more from Google Classroom. Uh, I'm Team Nago. I am an instructional coach with the LKDSB and uh, looking forward to learning together today. And I am Kate Allison, and I'm also an instructional coach with um, LKDSB, and I will be right along beside you in the chat room. Awesome. And finally, I am Denise. I am also an instructional coach with the uh, Lampton Kent Joseph School Board. And uh, we hope you just pick up a few things today and uh, enjoy the learning that we're going to share with you. Okay, so um, we thought we would just go over the agenda for this morning. Um, we are slotted to have an hour, but if it's less than that, that's um, maybe a bonus for all of us. Um, so we thought as you begin to uncover what Google Classroom is all about, um, we would share some things that you might want to consider when you're starting a virtual classroom. Um, then we're going to move into a live showing of some essential tools for Google. And then, um, of course, you may have some questions or wonder where to next, and we can show you some some websites and other places that you can um, find some information. So, um, as we're thinking, as we're thinking about our online classrooms in Google Classroom, um, lots of us are going to be in different situations. Some of us are going to be. Um, starting right from remote learning, right from the get-go. Other teachers might be um, setting up their, um, their virtual uh, learning management systems online uh, as a backup, sort of as we head back into a year of uncertainty. So these are just some things that we thought would be important to consider as you're thinking about your online classroom um, and thinking about you know, how, we, how we treat that space. So, uh, when we're designing our online classrooms, we want to be thinking about them not just like as a place to post things. Uh, we want students to, we want to think about how students are going to interact with that space. So just like our, um, just like our classroom, our, our real life classroom, uh, we want to think about things like how do we build a sense of community in that space? Uh, how are we establishing norms? How are we uh, facilitating collaboration and then providing feedback to students? Um, and even if we're starting out face to face and we think that we've done those things in our classroom, it's, it's really, really important to either go back and revisit or to build these things uh, when we move to an online setting because um, there are some different kind of environmental things to think about when we move to that space. Great points, team. So um, in terms of like building that sense of community is like, how do we as teachers design the experience for students that, you know, facilitates the sense of community? So how do we build uh, a shared understanding of how one another learn? How do we build the shared understanding of um, our likes and dislikes and names? And all of those things are really sort of critical to think about intentionally and this is an example here of how we can do a lot of things like that in, you know, in terms of the, it, it might look like a, uh, a non-academic set or uh, activity, but really we're setting the foundation for everything that we're going to be doing through the year. So in this uh, icebreaker example here, we're not only getting students to learn a little bit more about one another in a non-judgmental and um, open way, we are also setting the expectations for how we want them to respond to one another. So, um, you know, in this example here, we're talking about please read and reply thoughtfully to at least two other members in your reply, ask questions, uh, comment on specific points. We're scaffolding how we want their interactions to take place and not leaving it to chance. I think that's a good point, Teen. And uh, a lot of times when I, you know, set up my Google Classroom in my classroom, I actually did it in class with the kids. So you could walk through each step with the kids. You know, you could have it on the smart board so they can, if their view was up on the smart board, what you see, 
you can go through a couple practice sessions on how you want them to respond, what's appropriate, what's not. Uh, you know, you had to, I taught grade seven, eight when I used this and you had to, when they get to the post section, it's not a place for them to hang out. It's not a social media where they go in and just chit chat. You have a question that's legitimate about homework or something happening in the classroom, by all means, post to your peers there. But is it somewhere you go just to have a conversation, you know, with one of your friends? So I really like that we're mentioning that here. Yeah, like, just like everything that we do as teachers is like, you know, um, as, as much as we can guide and model and scaffold uh, for students, the, the more successful they're going to be. Um, one of the things that, you know, we want to consider is what do students expect of us as teachers? So just like everything else that we're doing at this stage in, in the year, we want it to be uh, as collaborative as possible. And we're, we're sort of building these norms together. So um, something that would be really important to consider initially in your online classroom is what are the expectations students have of the teacher. So that can, and that can take place in a variety of ways, right? You can, you can have discussions and, um, you know, online Zoom sessions or meet, Google Meets, for example, but um, really sort of taking those expectations and codifying them in one place so that um, students are really clear on um, what, and we are really clear of what students expect of us. One of the things I thought I might add here is I actually had to set up, like I, you know, I had to let the kids know that I am not going to be online every minute of the day. So after school, if you have a question, I would try to be on somewhere between 6 and 7.30 in the evening, or I would check in during those times just so that kids would know if they had a question about homework or work or upcoming events, then that was when I would be able to have some time to answer the questions. So if you were on at midnight and you posted something, I'm, no, I'm not going to be there to help you with it then, so. Right, great points. And then uh, just like in every classroom, um, initial, the initial stage uh, of coming together is uh, setting up those norms for success. So here are some examples here of things that um, are you kind of unique to the online setting. So um, when we're working together on, in a virtual setting, what does that look like? What are the norms? How do we set ourselves up environmentally for success? So. Um, these are just examples and they're not exhaustive in any way and you'd really want to build these things together with students. Um, but just something to really consider and, and think about intentionally uh, as you establish those norms for, for your learning space. I don't think anybody has any questions about this. Or no, I meant to um... I should probably pause there for a sec and say the chat is open um, in this format of Zoom. So feel free to ask questions or pause or um, you can personalize it to someone in here if you just want to send it to me or you can send it to the whole group or if you have a comment um, that will show up at the bottom there and you'll get like a little notification that someone has chatted. Um, and that's always good to keep open because um, it's a great way to clarify. Perfect, thanks. So um, at this point, we thought we would actually um, move away from our I believe I just quit sharing there. Did that happen? Yep. Yep. Okay, well, that's no good. <laughs> and I'm not sure how to get it back now. So can you can you share this? Can you share the screen? Nope. I think I should be able to get it here. No. My computer is acting up. One thing I've learned from doing my online sessions is not to panic because teen has talked me through doing this in our on and my <laughs> office sessions. Do you, do you want to log off for a moment and then come back in? Oh, there you go. I should be You're back. back. I'm back. You're in. Right. So we're going away from our deck and we're going into our, what the actual um, Google Classroom looks like. Uh, one thing we wanted to mention at this point is that you can do it on an iPad or a tablet. Uh, you can get the app on your phone. 
there are a lot more options available when you actually go to a computer. Um, so if there's some issues that you want to do when you're setting up your Google Classroom, uh, we highly recommend you go to a computer to um, get things rolling from there. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, just go to googleclassroom.com. It's based on your lkdsb.com um, email address. And um, this is uh, what it looks like. So if you wanted to create a classroom, all you do is go over here to the plus sign and you click, that's behind that. You uh, create a class. It'll ask you to give it a name and you could call it um, LAD 2020-2021. Um, and you can fancy it up a little bit if you want, but basically you hit create and it will create a classroom for you. And that's what it looks like. From here, um, if you want the students to join, there is a class code that's there. So the students could just enter. They would do the same thing that um, I just did. Batch classes. The students would just click the plus sign and they would click join class. And then it would ask them to enter your, the code and they would click that in there. I think mine looks a little differently because I'm logged on as the teacher. Right. So we've set up a uh, we set up a demo classroom here for uh, our LK launch event here today. So this is uh, this is your sort of landing page when you arrive at Google Classroom. So you're going to get the title of the classroom. You're going to get your class code. Uh, you're going to get the Google Meet link. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then along the left hand side side will be upcoming shows any appointments that are or sort of any assignments that are coming up due soon this is called your uh, this is called your stream sort of this is kind of where um, you get sort of things that are relevant to what's happening in the moment um, kind of almost like a little bit like your Facebook feed for example um, and this is where we can as teachers post uh, announcements for example so Perhaps we want to send a reminder out that um, that uh, meet the family night is on September 21st. Um, this is where we could do that. If I could type. That's okay. It's it's tough when people are watching. Mm -hmm. September, so we'll say it was the there we go. I did it again. September 21 and it is 630 till 8. Mm -hmm. And then you just click post. And there the announcement shows up and this is in the stream section. So all of your students would be able to see this particular announcement. I like this option for everything, setting up quick announcement, like tomorrow is reminder, tomorrow's red and green day, or tomorrow is orange shirt day, or mm -hmm. remember to bring in your uh, two moms in a stove lunch money, do mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I really like this feature. Mm -hmm. You can also, um, you know, just sort of kind of make it your own space together. Uh, you can upload a photo here so that that banner image that's uh, that's going across there you you can um, you can change that with a custom photo of your own if you like as well or they have several you can choose from I believe correct yeah yeah so we could pick and that will be our class theme perfect okay so if you move into the classwork tab, um, this is where you can actually post assignments or if you're going to give them some kind of an online quiz, a Google form or something, uh, you can go here. So we currently have one made um, for social studies, one for science, one for math. If you want to create one of those, whoops, 
if you wanted to create one of those, you go to create and you create a new topic. And um, you wanted to make one for writing. <laughs> writing. Um, you just add that and it would create one there. Um, if you want to actually post in this, I think we're going to do that now, aren't we, uh, T and Kate? We're going to actually post a mm -hmm. assignment. I think yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, maybe, mm -hmm. Denise, can you just show them how you can move, you can reorder the topics? Oh, for sure. So if you, you know, if you're a road of your teacher and you like them all to be organized, you just, so I'm going to move science. I want it to move to the top. I just go to the science tab and I just click on it. And then if I drag it up, it can get moved to the top. Mm -hmm. And it is good to put your assignments under a topic because um, you, you, as you use this, it just builds and builds and builds. So you will get lots of assignments. So it's a way of filing everything. Um, so it's easy for you. Sure. Good point. So uh, if you go to create, um, let's say we're going to create an assignment. And um, the title, we want to call this, um, uh, we'll do a math one, so we'll call it fraction, honestly, fraction exit ticket. Uh, my instructions might be, um, before leaving, class, please complete and submit. And maybe I've got one already made up on my drive. So I'm going to go to add in here. I could either choose the file from my drive. Uh, if it's a video that I wanted to show them, I would just click the link and then I could copy and paste the link in. If it was a file that I had from somewhere else, not on my drive, maybe it's saved in my computer or on jump drive I could include it here or if it's a YouTube uh, video you would click that there I'm gonna go to my drive and I'm going to pick um, right here I've got one already made up it's called math exit ticket I'm just gonna click on that I'm going to insert that and it has added that and right now this says students can view the file. What I want to do is to make life easier for myself. I always click make a copy for each student. Um, and um, So that's like handing out um, like a worksheet to every kid. If you don't do that, everybody is working on the exact same worksheet. And so any edits one person makes, everyone will see that which is a good idea if you're doing a collaborative project, like a slideshow or something. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're wanting just a document, it's good to make a copy for each student. Denise, there's a question and teen in the chat um, from Kate, and she is wondering about organizing notes or videos. Um, and she's, she's asking, would we create them there or in the stream? And so I think, um, if I'm understanding your question right, or if I'm not, you can actually unmute yourself um, and just tell me what you, you really mean. But um, I think what you mean, like if, if Denise was gonna add a video here, uh, you would organize it under your classwork. But if it was just a video you wanted everyone to watch, you put that in your stream. And it was just, you know, a funny video for the morning or a picture, or, um, you know, a note for everyone to refer to, remember to, uh, drop off such and such you would do that in the stream I think it depends on what you want the kids to do with that information what do you guys think, I think. or Kate yes come on tell me what, think. Um, what I meant is like I I was using my stream as a place to like dump everything and then I found that it was difficult to organize and so I've been watching videos on how to organize my Google classroom and I just whenever it was an assignment, it was pretty straightforward. You would go to your, your classwork, make your assignment there. But if I'm doing a note or a video on conjugating ER verbs, um, and it's something they need to have, but it doesn't have work attached to it, um, where would you best put that so that they can go back and find it? 
I would put it under their classwork because the stream mm -hmm. just keeps going and going, right? And then you can't, yeah. there's actually no way of filtering the stream. That was a big difficulty. Yeah. I, I do a lot of videos on, on, you know, those basic things like, cause it's French conjugating little yeah. things. And it's, it's videos they need to look back on later when they go to do work, but it doesn't always have an assignment attached to it at the moment. Um, it's more you could for actually um, maybe uh, my suggestion would be that you um, have a topic that's called resources or reference pages Ooh. or something and then just put all of your um, it could be an image or whatever like a link mm -hmm. to a YouTube thing or as you say like a document that you want them to refer to that might mm -hmm. be a good way of doing that well, which is kind of nice because then you can have that right at the top as mm -hmm. Denise showed yeah. you can move those topics around and then have the ones that the kids really need to look at. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, if you label them, so if you label one conjugating ER verbs, they could just click on that and then they know that's, if that's what they're looking for. They can find that mm -hmm. relatively quickly, I think. Mm -hmm. um, other basic question while I'm hearing. Yeah. Sure. Unrelated to that. I had a student last year tell me that Google lost their stuff. Is that actually possible? Can they hit submit and not have it show up? It's all a blank document. I thought no, but I thought I better double check. It's not impossible, but it's uh, improbable. <laughs> That's figured. Okay, thank you. You know what, Kate, though? Like, my daughter was doing Google Classroom stuff, and on her iPad, which is a bit dated, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it would, like, kick her out before she thought it was attached or something, mm -hmm. and then we would check later, and it would look like she had done no work. Okay. And then, um, if you search back, then it's in their drive somewhere. That's what I was going to say. Even yeah. if they say they submitted it and it doesn't get turned in, it's, it's if they were working on a doc or a slide or something, it's got to be in their drive somewhere. Yeah. So they should very easily be able to resubmit it, right? Like, it's yeah. not like it's gone, gone, gone. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, always he, delayed. He said, it was gone. he said it's always yeah. gone and it happened more no. than once, which is why. No. I'm just... <laughs> Mine was super delayed like sometimes it would be a couple hours later and then we go and check and there'd be like five of the documents because they okay. finally all loaded mm -hmm. okay cool yeah. i'll get off now and like watch yeah. sorry yeah no it's, that's good that's what it's about and it's great we, and you know when, when they're making a copy that's going to show up in their in their google drive but then you also have if they're making a doc you have all the features in doc where like version history where we can like you know they accidentally delete something they can go back and get it and re-access it so um most of those problems we can troubleshoot. Right. Great questions though, Kate. Yeah, thank you, Kate. Um, so if we get back to um, our math fraction exit ticket. So if you look over to the right side of the screen, this is where I can really personalize it. So um, if you've got some students that are um, modified, and maybe they don't get the exact same, maybe their exit ticket looks differently. This is where you can go in and you can um, choose. So these are the students that are actually in our launch 20 class. So right now they're all checked because all students are getting it. If I, if I didn't want Kate to get this, I would uncheck Kate and Kate wouldn't get it. And then the next time around, I would make another fraction exit ticket and I would give, give Kate the one that I wanted Kate to, to um, answer it's a good feature for say split grades or small groups or differentiating learning totally mm -hmm. i can put a weighted value to it if i you know if i'm going to give them a mark out of something i can i can make some changes here i can either say it's going to be ungraded or i could actually um type in what i want this to be out of i can give it a due date which is when it's 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 due so I said it was due today before class. So I'm going to put today on it. And uh, my topic, I want to keep this organized and I want this to be organized. So I'm going to make sure it goes in my math topic. Um, you know, if I wanted to attach a rubric, all that would happen here. I really liked about this is I could, I could do this all the day before, or if I was having a supply teacher, you could do this all the day before and you can actually schedule the time and date when this the students are going to actually receive this uh, into their Google Classroom. Like it's an exit ticket, so I wanted them to get it at the end of class. So I don't want them working on it during class. 
So um, I'm going to change it to today's date. And let's say our math class goes um, from 11.15 to 12.15. Then maybe I want them to get this at 12.10 p.m. And then I would schedule it. So I, it's out there. I've, I've got it going. My students aren't going to see it until the time when I've got it. And there I can see it in my math topic. It's scheduled to come at 1210 today. And it's gray. So that also indicates that it's scheduled. Right. Anybody else have anything to add here, Teen or Kate? Um, we, can we go, can we go back up? Let's take a look at um, some of just some of the options that you have when you're creating assignments. To the right there, you're talking? Yeah, so uh, when we hit create there, um, this is where, you know, this is where we can do, can you go, just just go back for a sec there? Uh, yep, Denise? for sure. So we'll just go back to the options, just um, click the create and then just leave it there. So this is where, um, we can save ourselves as teachers some work, right? It is that uh, if we assign a quiz, then um, we can use, uh, it, we can actually design it so that it marks itself. If we want to, if we just want to ask kind of one key question, we can put that in here. And then maybe to, to Kate's, idea, uh, Kate's example back there where we're just like posting some material, some reference material, that's where we'd use, um, that's where we'd use that feature. Yeah, this is totally what Kate Kate Brenders was talking about. She might type in her um, so um, um, I forget what she said it was. Con conjugating ER verbs. Oh yeah, conjugating. Nope. So uh, you would add whatever it was you had here. If you have a video, you would add that, and over here you would put it. Um, so if you created a topic that was called um, resources, then that's where it would go. Just go ahead and post that. Yeah. So, um, she's actually asking another question here. She's saying, so can you reuse a post? So if you go back to yes. the create button um, and there's that reuse button. So there's the topic we just made, Kate, and that's yeah. where you can put all of your resources. Um, at the bottom there, you want to speak to that 13, the reuse sure. post yeah. part? So go ahead and click that reuse post. Whoa. <laughs> so, that, so this is where you pick which class you, you're, you're reusing that assignment from. So I'll go with our launch. So let's go. And then we, so we would So you can take an assignment from one class and assign right. it to another class right. without having to retype yeah, all that stuff. You got okay, it. that's awesome, thanks. Yeah, so. Uh, so we could take this, we could take an assignment from another class that we had assigned and then reuse it with this class um, following that same step, that same set of steps. So that's awesome for you, Kate Brenners, right? If you're teaching uh, Rotary French or, you know, a French immersion, if you're doing two uh, classes. Yeah. 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 That's what I meant. Cause sometimes I do the same material in multiple classes mm -hmm. yeah. and I'd rather not have to type it all yeah. up. Constantly. Agreed. That work, is a great question. Work smarter, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will say I have, I, since I'm a student in this class, I just got a notification that I have a new assignment on my iPad. Right. It just dinged up. So that is something that your students should see. Mm -hmm. So that would be the resources, the conjugating ER verbs that I just posted, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, can we, can we jump over to the, uh, to the students tab? Is there, are there any other questions about, um, creating topics and its or assignments before we jump to something else? Looks like we're going to do that. Yep. Nothing in the chat. So, um, this is where. Uh, your students will show up when they've been invited or when they've joined the classroom. And actually, if you have it up running on the smart board and you post the code and the students are actively joining the classroom, you'll see all their names pop up. 
So right now, um, in our fake classroom, these are my four students, Catherine, Pam, Teresa, and Steph. So they've all been invited to my, my classroom, and Tina and I are down as the teachers. So, so this is where you would, um, for those of you that are team teaching or uh, want to want to share our classroom, this is where you'd be able to add co-teachers as well. Just click on that button there. Oops. Just click on that button there, and you would type in somebody's name, mm -hmm. and um, it would pop up, so and then they would be part of your the classroom. Yeah, so then, and then, so teachers have all the same uh, ability to add assignments or add things to this to the stream or add classwork. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the things about Google Classroom is once the students are invited in um, with their .com, then you can invite their parents. So this is one of the things that we, in order to make sure that you have uh, some sort of contact with parents, um, it's probably a very good idea to send home on the first day of school some kind of a newsletter. I'm sure most teachers do that. Introduce yourself, um, talk about a few expectations, and ask for some kind of contact information, a phone number, an email account. And once you have that email account, you can share with your teacher or your parents that you're going to be using Google Classroom as an online form for communication. If you would like to receive emails, please provide me with your email list. And then you simply type in the email list here, or the email here. And um, I, I don't know Kate's mom's email address, <laughs> but um, it would type in there and then the parent would get a um, summary uh of their students work if you so choose that or they would definitely get an announcement if you wanted to post announcements right. i like this tool it's kind of nice because it eliminates the need for something like another like remind or um just an email because it's all here together so it's everything is within google and I like it because then they, you know, they get a notification. So if mm -hmm. they can go on and check their child's progress, if their child mm -hmm. has three mm -hmm. assignments to do and they haven't handed them in mm -hmm. they last week, mm -hmm. then, you know, the parent can see that. Mm -hmm. And it does an automatic weekly one. So you don't even have to remember to do it. They'll get a summary. Mm -hmm. Keeping parents engaged is key. <laughs> I, you know what, while you were, while you were showing that, I know we have a couple other things we want to do. I just want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, when you post something in classwork, it will automatically show up in the stream as well. So, um, if you don't want to inundate your stream with all of the classwork stuff, you can actually go into the settings and turn that off so that the only the things that go in the stream are what you post in the stream versus the stream and the classwork stuff. I think it's actually a good idea to take them here anyway, it's just to show them yeah. what they're offering. Yeah. So, you know, you can name it whatever you want and give it a whole bunch of specifications, room number, all that jazz. Uh, here's where you can start really personalizing it. Um, yeah, so it's under that stream. See where it says stream there, Denise? Across yeah. from that, it says students can post and comment. So sometimes you, you want them to add, but sometimes you might not. Maybe not until you get your norms established, you know, so the kids don't use that as like a chat room. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually individually go through your kids and do that if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's, you're finding there's one person that's getting on there and, and really messing things up. Mm -hmm. Uh, guardian sample. So then this is, it shows you a sample of what the guardians would get once you have their emails established in. What's included, class activity, how do they get them. Mm -hmm. This walks it through here. Mm -hmm. And then back where you were before, um, Denise. If you, I think you can just click on your other tab at the top there. Yep. Yeah. Um, where it says classwork on the stream. Yep. Right at the top. That that's where you can change it so that you can hide um, classwork in the stream. Yeah. Right. 
So all they get in the stream then is just announcements. Just announcements. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that you too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of Google Meet. There's the, the link. And then if you get down in grading, um, which we decided we're not going to touch base about today, you know, there are other options for you out there, but um, we'll talk about that in a minute, maybe. I think that we were going to go into Meet. Um, uh, Teen, were you going to mention about the Meet, the Google Meet? Yeah, we're just going to uh, show a quick um, tutorial on, on how you would create a, on how you create a meet. Um, so we can just do that right. The simplest way is right from our launch page. So that's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Just click the meet link right there. There's your personalized, uh, link to, for your classroom. Um, so with Google meets in our lkdsb.com domain, um, that gives us some additional security that isn't available in the regular Google Meet. So things like um, students can't join before the teacher comes in and we have the ability to mute mics, turn off cameras. We also have the ability. So, and also once we leave that Google Meet, then that Google Meet and students can't remain in that room by themselves after the meeting has ended. So those are some um, some good security features for, uh, that are enabled by our lkdsb.com domain. But this is where, um, so you launch, you start your Google Meet, you give, you give students the code, they type in that code and, uh, and, and they go and you can, you can have your face-to-face um, your -face discussion online. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there are any questions or. Yes, please feel free to ask any questions. We do have time allotted for questions or wonderings or um, anything that you're thinking about. So, so maybe something to consider um, is also, I'm going to post in the chat here, the uh, an invite code for our Google Classroom. It, it might be helpful for teachers to go in and, uh, and join as a student just to see what the student side of the, of the platform looks like. So you can go in and see what um, your students will actually see. Um, so you can join this classroom uh, if you have some time today and, and check out and kind of see what um, things look like on, on that side. Mm -hmm. It is a bit of a different perspective and it's also good. Um, <laughs> um, you answered Al's question, Teen. Um, if you play around with it on your laptop and an iPad, because mm -hmm. uh, the, you are limited on an iPad, um, it's not, not doable because most kids do have an iPad or some kind of Android device, but it is good so that you can troubleshoot if you happen to be in like a online learning situation. Well, and just, uh, it's way easier setting up all the logistics of it too, right? Like when you get your class set up, it's, it's way easier to have more options on a computer than you do on an iPad. Um, you should be okay on a, on a Chromebook, Kate, because um, it's running in the Chrome browser, which, uh, which works well. It's, it's just when you get into the iOS apps, um, sometimes all of the functionality is, is not there. I would say the other thing about using a Chromebook is that if the kids, um, I don't think that it's got a drive that you can just pull up files from. So if you want to attach like uh, something you were working on or something you have like a picture from your own drive that doesn't have that, is that right, Teen? Um, they should have access. To, they should have access to Google Drive. So if they're working on a Chromebook, um, I like their to... files from home. If um, they. Yeah. As long as it's saved in the Chromebook, it should be there. Mm -hmm. Downloaded it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think. Am I right, team? Yeah. As, as long as it's in their Google Drive, then it should be accessible. Okay. So the, the intent of today's session was to provide a, uh, you know, sort of a quick overview of, um, 
of Google Classroom features. We didn't get you know too deeply into a lot of um, sort of the more uh, tricky functions. So um, hopefully we answered anybody's questions. We're, we're, the idea is that we, we we're facilitating just kind of getting started with your Google Classroom, and then we're going to provide you some opportunity to uh, to be able to get into the nitty gritty with some of the more advanced features. Um, we thought we would share. Uh, some of the resources from our LKDSB elementary remote learning resource. Um, so the link is on the page here. Um, the QR code is also will take you there. Uh, we'll also copy that link and put it into the chat as well. But um, Denise is going to quickly give us a, a um, quick look at the resource. Oh, my bad. Yep. No Sorry, I wasn't picking up your uh... <laughs> You got it. So there are a wealth of resources on uh, on this page that we put together over the uh, last few months that we've been working on remote learning. So if you if you, do you want to jump into let's go let's go to tools um, and Google Suite. So archived here are all of the sessions that we've done in the spring um, for Google Suite. So they, they're a little bit more uh, specific. They cover all of the tools in, uh, in Google Suite. So things like uh, Google Classroom, as well as Google Docs, um, Google Slides, all of uh, the tools that are in the Google uh, portfolio of apps. And they're all archived in one spot um, for your reference here. Also in this section, um, in the tools section, is a whole um, video just on Google Meet. So um, if you want to check that one out too, there's some, it might be a little bit um, more information than we gave you today. Kind of a one-stop shop for all your uh, uh -huh. remote learning. Mm -hmm. uh, tools are available there at that site. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the other thing too, I should say, is that um, if you have a quick question and it comes up, feel free to email any one of us. Um, I, we probably should have put our emails on one of these slides <laughs> real quick. We're all in the system. <laughs> Look for our yeah. names and they'll, it'll populate in it, your- It should pop up. Look for, you. for sure. But it looks like um, it looks like we were thorough enough. There aren't there aren't a lot of questions, mm -hmm. um, so I think that we'll kind of we'll leave it there. Well, thank you to everybody that joined us today. We appreciate you taking time uh, away from your very busy lives. We know that mm -hmm. everybody, wants, everybody wants to enjoy those last few uh, moments of summer. So mm -hmm. thank you again. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, um, this has been helpful for you. Yes. Don't forget to attend any of the other great launch things that are coming this week. This afternoon, Denise and Teen are hosting Joe Bowler at one. So that's going to be an awesome session. It's going to be a great one. Best-selling yeah. author, Joe Bowler, please come yeah. join us. Yeah, that's going to be great. Lots of great things the rest of the week. So check out the lineup. You should have an email from your principals or um, on our blog spot. All of the information's there too. For sure. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy your day, Enjoy your day everybody. Have a good day, everybody.